Lirian, and study your PhD in complex system and the scope of mathematics and computing. And so first I us say, why we need user study? And you can imagine that we developer, when we are working on some projects, and there's some isolated, oh, there's some clear gap between us and the user. Even you're using your product by yourself, you're, you're viewing this product from a different perspective. It's hard to say how the user are observing and understanding your project, uh, product. So if there's no user study, we can see, okay, this old man working on this website for uh, 1,500 states, but still he don't know why he can click that certain links, and that's horrible. So in order to improve your products, you need to know what people say and what people do with your stuff. And in order to define how to learn users' opinion, we have this two uh, main access to define which method to adopt. And well, the X access is the qualitative or quantitative approach. That really depends on at which stage you're in uh, of the period of development. Usually at the beginning of the development, you would like to know why we do that and how to fix some things, either by adding new features or some certain uh, deficiency of your product. And at that time, uh, you need to know more, uh, you need to use more quantitative assert the research to know exactly uh, what people are thinking about. Um, but if you're at the later stage of the period of development, you would like to know, okay, what we should do um, or to what level we should stop and like, how much time and how many people we should like assign to that task, then you will use a more uh, quantitative ap approach. Sorry. And on the y-axis, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, deter uh, determines either the attitudinal or behavior information you want to get. So uh, the attitudinal is to learn what people say, but otherwise what people do, that is usually uh, some statistical patterns of a large group of user. And so based on these two uh, factors, you can see there are so many different methodologies. And here, I will focus on this uh, data analysis or A-B testing. And because um, since I use this quantitative approach to do more data uh, stuff, and I also want to learn the behavior patterns of the large group of users. So here, the data source is not is usually not directed like by interview or by uh, observing how people use instead. All we use some uh, data log, uh, the, the log of servers or uh, those uh, more large scale of data source to do things offline and like to do pause and to understand what's happening behind that. Uh, so, uh, here I will, well, it's hard to say. Uh, I will present how to uh, do a quantitative data analysis based on my, uh, my experience uh, when I was an uh, intern uh, in Mozilla Fairfax last summer. And I was working in the user research team and I, precisely I worked with Fairfax Test Pilot. And what is that? Let's say, um, Actually, this is a uh, small item that you cannot say. Okay, so at Mozilla, we have uh, a lot of Fairfax developers, and they're working very hard, and <coughs> that, that is a fox with some red hair. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they, and they're working very hard to optimize Fairfax to make the user happy, and, and there are a bunch of users that play with, with Fairfax every day. But sometimes, the um, developer has some question, some puzzle, but they don't know who to ask. They want to know what the people's feeling about the project, and, but still there's some gaps. And in order to fulfill this gap, to connect them together, we have this test palette that is 
the internal platform developed by this uh, user researching. And what it's do, uh, uh, it's actually just a very fast add-on. Well, when people install this test pilot add-on, uh, they were randomly selected to involve some certain user study. Uh, the simple one is the read, while the complicated one can be uh, A-B testing, while you can see different interface of Fairfax and based on your actions but the development team will adopt the different uh, actions after that. So, um, so based on this platform, this test pilot, uh, we basically release different studies and to answer questions from different teams at Mozilla. So um, the specific project we talked about is this user research for new web app design. And if you have used different browsers, you will know where fast have this uh, blank tab. Uh, that is, when you open tab, nothing is displayed in this page. And for many years and until now, but if you look at other uh, popular browsers uh, currently, um, like Chrome <coughs> or Safari, they have lots of stuff in their new tab page. Well, to get you to your target as far as possible. So uh, for fast people thought, okay, maybe we should put something there. But should we do that? And what do you think that empty space? And so the designers uh, really don't have no idea. So they asked us to do this research to help them to make the decision. So basically there are two questions. The first is, whether we should do that. And the second one, if we do that, what should be displayed in that space? So we have this two-step study. Well, the first step is um, to learn users' browsing behavior in this blank tab. So um, for this study, we didn't change any your elements in the Firefox. We just uh, release to user and ask if they'd like to uh, it's been a study for five days and we don't change anything. We just observe how you open a new tab and how you load a page and when you leave the tab. So just, just actions related with this uh, blank tab page. Um, okay, so um, basic sentences. We released a study to 30% and test pilot users for five days. And we got this more than uh, 200,000 user submissions. On average, you can say um, people open about 11 new blank tabs per day, and there were 6.5 pages per day, and they visit to different unique domains. Um, <coughs> and you may be wondering why this, they open more tabs than the pages they roll per day. Because it, it always happens that people open a new tab without doing anything, just close that. And that's very interesting. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, well, if you look at this, this is a, just a very simple statistic to say how people load a page. So, and which elements you're using, basically. And if those are details, those are aggregated. So you can say, your bar attracts a lot of usage for loading a page on a new tab. And, I'm sorry. Also popular, but it just has like half the uh, usage as a dual bar. And for bookmarks, it's still popular. And if you look at the, um, there are two different bookmarks method. You are a uh, bookmark toolbar or bookmark menus. The toolbar is much popular than the menu, as uh, when you use the menu, you have more clicks than what you click the toolbar. And for history, it's really a very a few percentage of the total usage. Because um, you can imagine people only return to 
test room where they have certain things you cannot remember in the test. And yeah. And for this, it's a simple uh, it's a it's a simple analysis to say whether uh, users the the distinct domains confirm this uh, twenty no, eighty twenty law. Um, so if we rank all the distinct domains by their frequency usage, and we check out the percentage of total page load they have, they have, and it's roughly a, and so the, 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 like the top uh, 10, top 20 domains attracts a lot of page loads, and if you count it, you can say, about uh, 70, less than 20% of SM domains attracts more than 80 visits. So top domains are, are really dominant to this page rows. And that confirmed this 2080 parallel. And if you look at it, this definition, that is for many events, while not only browsing, roughly 80% of effects come from 20% of the process. Um, this is uh, aggregated across all the users, so it's a, a very global measure. And, and after that, I'm wondering whether this law holds for individual user. So here, we define this main domains for each user as a, a set of domains taking 80% of total page visits for that user. And we plot this uh, so we, ca we can calculate the ratio of the main domain to the total domains we have. Then we can have this ratio, and we plot this with the number of page load for this user, and there's a very clear trend that uh, the more active a user is, this ratio is, is decreased. Why that happens? Uh, because when you have a lot of visits, most of your visits actually um, concentrated on those top sites. You can imagine that, uh, like users here, they have more than thousands of page loads per day, but probably they only visit Google, Gmail, Facebook. So this ratio will be very small for them. Um, okay, and <coughs> And for this one, we study two different time. The first is uh, the time between you open a new tab and you load the first page. Another one is how long you stay on the tab. And, and for com or we compare like two categories of different users based on uh, either you use more mouse actions or keyboard actions. And we can see that keyboard base users are acting more faster. So they load the first page in a shorter time, but they stay on the tab for um, more time compared to mouse-based users, but they're, yeah, the, but roughly on average, uh, they open the first tab and 60 seconds and stay on the tab for one minute. So um, actually uh, this, if you look at this first study, especially this plus and this plus, you can say people have very high preferences to top sites. And they often go there, they use them a lot. This um, strongly supports the existence of a non-blank tab. Imagine that if you extract all those top sites and put them there, then user can just open a tab with one click and go to what they want to visit, what they want to visit. So that's really convenient. So, okay, we're great. We should have a non-black tab. Then we have this second step study, and because we want to have something here, but we don't know exactly what it is. We, this study is more complicated because once we search by law, they were being randomly assigned to one of these groups where each group will see a roughly similar page but with different algorithm to select the size to display. 
Well, the, the group zero is just a control group. There's nothing changed. And for the group one, two, three, four, five, they were seeing different stuff uh, with a similar um, designs. And because we don't, we don't want this, um, this play style to distract users. Well, the group one is most uh, frequent recent <coughs> sites. And um, in Mozilla, we have a measure called uh, recency that is based on both the, f uh, the, the frequency and the recency of the site. And that is uh, used a lot in the recommendation of sites in this URL bar. And we, in the group two, we have recently bookmarked sites. Group three is recently closed sites. And the group four and five are two different predictions, either based on the content or the tab jumps. Uh, the later, uh, the, the analysis I will show you exclude this group four and five because when I lock the Mozilla, those two predictions uh, hasn't got a chance to produce some data because they need some time, like a week, to, to be trained because they need to learn user's action first. Then within the second week, they can actually uh, provide something. So I only have the first of four groups. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, when I when I did this preliminary analysis for this step two uh, study, and we we did some similar study as we had done. Um, for the first one, and we compare different time people and um, compare different methods of how people load a page, and this add-on is uh, is actually what we uh, it, it's a it's a new page of the new uh, you know it's a new content page of the new tab page. So because those are actually an add-on to change that one tab. So for this add-on, first this uh, control groups has uh, no usage because they don't have that. But for other three groups, the frequency groups uh, is more is the most successful one, and it attracts uh, more uh, users than others. And and the recently closed tab is also good. And but bookmark is not so important compared to others. And for all those three groups, the people use, okay, this bar, people use less URL bar than this control groups. Because you can imagine if a user can find their targets in the blank, uh, in the top page, they will not use that URL bar to search for more. They just click it. And it really helps them save them time. And but the interesting thing is this, they use more bookmarks, and I still don't know why. And, okay. And, and this one, and this one I try to dig more for the mouse base using keyboard base here. So in order to quantify that their preference to either mouse or, or keyboard, I define this ratio as the keyboard actions to the total action you had. And that so if you have a ratio equals to zero, you're completely mouse based. Or ratio equals to one, then you're basically only use keyboard. And so if you com compute this ratio across all the user, you can see the average ratio is point um, point four, point four six. So it's rough in the middle, but Generally, we have slightly preference to mouse for all the users. And if you look at this histogram, that's very interesting. We are actually the last user in between those uh, use a mixture of either mouse or keyboard actions. And but if you completely rely on mouse or keyboard, you basically stick to that a lot. And, well, this one, uh, I, I want to say whether 
user with more tags, perhaps all can use more keyboard, because I, uh, I, I assume that when you have more tabs, the keyboard shortcuts will help you to target uh, each tab more conveniently. So I plot this um, well, with number of tabs and this keyboard based ratios, and there's a clear train that when you have more tabs open, you use keyboards more often because the ratio is higher. And it's very surprising to see that uh, when I check the, check the number of tabs for users, some user can't open more than thousands of tabs. And that's really amazing. <laughs> and, and for this one, it's, uh, it's, it, it's a time of that I had mentioned different measures, time between the open the tab and <coughs> page load, and how long they stay. So uh, the interesting, I want to point out that um, if you look at how long they stay on a tab here, uh, the control group is 57 seconds, and the frequency, the frequency group is the only one that decrease, actually decreases this time. And that can be explained as, imagine the first size display a lot of uh, things like Google, Gmail, Facebook, and, and Twitter, and you go there a lot, but you basically only check updates and you leave soon. So if they go to their, those sites more often and leave there like <coughs> soon, and this average will decrease by those visits to the outside. And uh, for this too, um, recently bookmarked and recent calls, they, um, they have longer time between uh, before the first page roll, and they largely increase people's uh, time span on the tab. Um, imagine that when you want to bookmark a site, uh, you already because information reach, and then you may refer to that later. So they're probably more helpful compared to those offline in my tutorial something. So when you visit there, you probably will browse for a longer time. Okay. So um, I'm sorry, that, that analysis is quite preliminary, and, and thank you. And